Speaking on stage is something that's a little scary for me. When I first got into online courses, that was in 2008. And it was because I wanted to teach spirituality to entrepreneurs. I was like, I know I need to teach this stuff, but I don't, I have no idea how. Do I do a seminar or a workshop or like, how do I even begin? How do I get people to show up? Like rent a room? Like, how do you do this kind of shit? Right. So I started Googling how to market a workshop. I think it was. And that's when I came across Jeff Walker's product launch formula and, um, and bought that and learned about online courses. And I was thrilled because I was like, yes, this happens on a computer and I can sit behind a screen and I can do this and I don't have to get out in front of an audience. And so I've done stuff in person, but I haven't been speaking for many, many years. So this came about because Bryson, my man over here, um, what up Bryson <laughs> was, he was like, um, he got me this gig, this speaking gig. And, um, and I was like, okay, let's, let's roll. Then I actually had to go up and speak and be in front of this audience. I'll be honest, like I was nervous about it. Back in the day, I did a mastermind group in 2009 that was in person. And it was just me and nine other people around my dining table in my house back then. And, and that was scary as fuck. Because like, what if I say something and they don't like it and they're there in, in the room with me when I was shooting video, I don't have to like deal with however people feel about it, right? So there's something about that that was really scary for me. And so I haven't really done speaking since then. And so coming into this event, I was nervous. And then my wife said, just enjoy the nervousness. It's the little boy coming out of his den. And there's something about that way of thinking about it, the way that she said it. Coming out of the den is very much my journey because I created this den inside of myself of I could isolate in this room, like behind the computer, all that stuff. But in general, whatever you're going through in your business that you're nervous about, maybe it's putting out videos, maybe it's sending emails, maybe it's getting up on stage and getting in front of audiences, speaking, putting yourself out there. Maybe it's getting on sales calls, right? It's natural to be nervous about these things. And if you can think about it as, hey, it's just your little boy, your little girl kind of coming out and playing, coming out of hiding, I can have compassion for him. And then I can step into being the adult in the room that's like, hey, I get it. You're nervous. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fun. We're going to have a good time. I'll grab your hand and hold you. We're going to go out here and we're going to do this and we're going to have a good time. Another thing that can be helpful when you're going through something that you're nervous about think about it as like, you just need to get the reps in. Let me put it a different way. I read a book from Ed Sheeran years ago. It's an odd kind of book. It's him with someone else. And there's a lot of illustrations, but it's very sweet. And in there, he talks about how as a songwriter, the first hundred songs that you write are shit. So it's just a matter of getting the first hundred songs written and out as soon as possible. And then once you're past number 100, like, chances are some of them, you're actually going to start writing some good stuff. So I think it the same way, like I intend to be a well-known, high-paid, sought-after keynote speaker. That's what I want to be. And I know the style I want to be is like, I don't have a fixed talk that I give. I step in front of the audience and I read the room. I talk to people, I see what they need to hear. And then I draw on my insane repertoire of stuff to what I think is gonna be most helpful for these people. And so that style of speaking is a little more risky because I don't have a PowerPoint and a fixed thing that I can lean on. But for me, it's less risky because I can just be in response to the people in the room. And so the way I think of it is I just need to get the reps in, right? So this was rep number one, I'll give it my best, but it doesn't matter if it was good or bad. Um, I'm not going to let my emotions, how I feel about myself or how I feel in general, be impacted by whether it went good or bad. I'm just going to be like, great, one more rep. And same thing, like if you're getting into sales and it's new and uncomfortable, it's like, all right, just going to get the first 100 sales calls done. It's going to be awkward. It's okay that it's awkward for the first 100. It's okay that you make a ton of mistakes because that's how you learn. Just get the first hundred in your first hundred songs are going to be shitty. Your first hundred sales calls are being shitty. Your first hundred times you speak are going to be shitty. Your first hundred emails or blog posts are going to be shitty. And if they're not, that's just a bonus. How about that? So it, it reframes it to being, Hey, anything above shitty is like win. And even just honestly getting up there and doing it win. 
So take the win. Take the win.